Howdy, folks. It's me, Josh. Let me ask you a question. When was America founded? I'm sure most of you will say 1776, which, sure, the United States of America was founded as an independent country in 1776. But America as a people have existed long before that date. And I would rather argue that America, as a people and identity, was founded in the year 1607 with the establishment of the English settlement of Jamestown. But only a couple years later, the settlement, and America by extension, were almost completely abandoned. So what if that changed? What if, in an alternate timeline, England had abandoned America? So first, let's take a quick look into what exactly went down. The Americas were first discovered when, in 1492, after having been cut off from trade with Asia by the rising Ottoman Empire, Christopher Columbus would attempt to find a new route to Asia for Spain by sailing across the Atlantic. But instead of finding China, Columbus would end up stumbling upon an entire continent completely unknown to Europe. So Spain, without any real competition, would conquer vast swaths of Central and South America in search of riches and to spread the Catholic faith. And Spain would even push into what's today the American South, colonizing Florida in the settlement of St. Augustine in 1565, and pushing as far north as what's today Wilmington, North Carolina, with some explorers making it all the way up to Virginia where Jamestown would eventually be settled. Meanwhile, back in Europe, the Protestant Reformation led numerous Christians to rebel against the Catholic Church, including the King of England, Henry VIII, who, because the Pope wouldn't let him divorce his wife in order to marry some other woman, decided to throw a fit and make his own church with himself in charge. And thus was born the Church of England. Later on, one of Henry's daughters, Mary, who was a Catholic, would end up taking the throne and try to re-Catholicize England with help from her new husband, Philip II of Spain, a staunch Catholic who saw himself as the defender of the faith, who technically became King of England because of this. However, after Mary died, her half-sister, Elizabeth, who was a Protestant, would end up becoming queen, solidifying England as a Protestant nation and removing Philip II's influence. And so, Spain and England would end up becoming intense rivals, and with Spain enriching itself through colonization in the Americas, England decided to follow suit. Elizabeth would send a dude named Sir Walter Raleigh to survey the east coast of what's today the United States, which he would name Virginia, in honor of the Virgin Queen Elizabeth. And England would make their first attempt at settling Virginia in 1585 with the colony of Roanoke in what's today North Carolina, which famously disappeared. And England wouldn't make another attempt to colonize for around 20 years. In 1603, Elizabeth would die being succeeded by the Scottish King James, who would revive the ideas of colonizing Virginia, giving a charter to the Virginia Company, who was given a monopoly on English colonization in the area. The Virginia Company was split into two subdivisions, the Plymouth Company, which was in charge of settling the North, and the London Company, which was in charge of the South. See, the Virginia Company, and thus both of its subdivisions, was a joint stock company which meant that its sole purpose was to turn a profit for its investors, and the success of any colony was judged based on how economically viable it was. And since the Spanish had discovered a ton of gold in the New World, investors took a risk in hopes that gold would be discovered in Virginia as well so that they'd see a profit. So the London Company gathered about a hundred dudes and voyaged across the Atlantic. They first landed in the coast around Virginia Beach, but out of fear that they'd get blown up by the Spanish, they decided to move further inland, finding a spot in the Hampton Roads region of Virginia, which they named... Jamestown, in honor of King James. And everything went perfect for the settlers, and they had no problems whatsoever, and the colony thrived without issue. <laughs> yeah, right. Jamestown suffered famine, drought, disease, a ton of Indian raids, and pretty much any other nasty affliction you can think of. And, even worse, there wasn't even any gold. But one of the settlers, John Smith, stepped up in leadership, fixed the food supply, and made peace with the natives. And things were going pretty well for Jamestown. 
until Smith blew himself up in an explosive accident and had to return to England for surgery. And with Smith gone, things went pretty much back to square one, as conflict with the Indians started again and Jamestown entered what's known as the Starving Time, in which everyone was, well, starving, with some even resorting to cannibalism. Due to all of this, the number of settlers in Jamestown had dwindled to only about 60 dudes left, and those that were still there didn't want to be. Meanwhile, the London Company had no idea that any of this was going on, and they didn't realize until Smith returned to England and rather rudely told them just how horrible things were in Jamestown, demanding that the company send aid. And with Smith releasing some memoirs on his adventures in Virginia, this led many in England to call for aid as well as a moral obligation to help the settlers. So, the London Company went into building a ship called the Sea Venture, which would be sent on a massive resupply mission. But, while on its voyage, the ship ended up getting caught in a hurricane, with the crew stranded in Bermuda, with only a few making it to Jamestown. And after their arrival, they, alongside the few settlers that were still there, decided to just pack up, build a couple ships, and sail back to England, never to return. However, with calls for relief still strong in England, the London Company sent three more ships, led by Lord de Loire, the governor of Virginia, to help Jamestown. And, no joke, after the settlers had already abandoned the colony and were already sailing down the James River to go back to England, Lord de Loire showed up just in time and forced them to turn around and go back. Under De Loire's leadership, things would once again start going well for Jamestown, due in large part to one of the survivors of the sea venture named John Rolfe, who snagged a couple tobacco seeds from Bermuda in order to test them out in Virginia. And tobacco would prove to be a major success in Virginia, which would make the colony, and the company by extension, a lot of money. And though the London Company would eventually go bankrupt due to fighting with the Indians, leading the English Crown to take direct control, this success would lead to the establishment of 12 other colonies on the American coast, 13 in total, which would eventually become the United States of America. But what if that changed? What if, in an alternate timeline, Jamestown had been abandoned? Though it would be easy to just have the colonists that were trying to flee get out before De Loire gets there, this most likely wouldn't have allowed for Jamestown to be permanently abandoned, as De Loire had brought a bunch of new settlers with him, and even if the colony were empty when he got there, he'd just repopulate it with the new settlers. Instead, there's another option that would quite easily allow for Jamestown to be permanently abandoned, which is to have John Smith die after accidentally blowing himself up instead of just being injured. So, with Smith dead, the colony once again ends up in its starving time, but this time, without Smith being there to give a wake-up call to the London Company, nor being able to ignite a push to relieve the colony with his memoirs, the London Company never mounts its huge resupply missions. And without these resupply missions, the colony ends up being abandoned as the remaining settlers flee back to England. Upon their return, the company would quickly learn of the untimely fate of the colony, which would leave them greatly distraught. Not because of how nearly every settler died of starvation or were killed by Indians, but rather because there wasn't even any gold. Meaning, zero profit. After this disastrous failure, the investors in the London Company would quickly back out as the company would go under. And without the resupply missions, they would never learn of the profitability of tobacco in the region. So instead, settlement in Virginia would very likely be deemed as economically unviable, meaning they wouldn't have any reason to start any new colonies in the area, as there would be an incredible risk with practically no reward for the investors. And meanwhile, with a lack of economic profit in Jamestown, this would also mean that the Plymouth Colony wouldn't be settled either. Now, I already know what most of you are thinking. But Josh, the Pilgrims didn't go to Massachusetts for profit, they went for religious freedom. And you would be absolutely correct. However, the only reason that the Pilgrims were able to gain a charter on that land in the first place was due to the London Company's brother, the Plymouth Company. 
After Jamestown was first settled, the Plymouth Company tried to do the same thing in the Northeast in what they called the Popham Colony, a short-lived settlement in what's today Maine, which itself ended up being abandoned. And after this abandonment, the Plymouth Company went into disuse, that is, until the economy of Jamestown began to grow when John Smith was sent to survey the Northeast for new settlement locations, after which it was revived. The Pilgrims, meanwhile, who were English hyper-Protestants who thought that the Church of England wasn't Protestant enough, fled England to the Netherlands due to persecution. But they also didn't like the influence of Dutch culture, so they decided to leave for the New World. They considered three main options, either to settle in the pre-established colonies of Virginia or New Amsterdam, or to settle their own colony for England in the Northeast. And wanting to get away from English authority and Dutch culture, they decided to go for the latter, gaining a charter from the Plymouth Company settling the colony of Plymouth Bay. But with Jamestown gone and John Smith dead, the Plymouth Company isn't revived, meaning the Pilgrims can't get a charter on New England. And with Virginia not being an established colony either, this would leave the Pilgrims with only one option, which would be to settle in New Amsterdam for the Dutch, likely settling in the Connecticut area to get away from too much Dutch influence, though still under Dutch rule. As a result, without the establishment of major English colonies in the area, New Netherland is able to survive as the Dutch dominate much of the Mid-Atlantic region, stretching from probably around New Hampshire to Northern Virginia. France, meanwhile, would also spread their control into the Northeast, expanding the colony of Acadia, which would likely develop into a major colony for France. And without the English blocking them, Spain would continue to set up colonies in the south. However, this isn't to say that England would just lose all interest in setting up a colony in America, as with the almost certainty that someone would discover the profitability of tobacco or another agricultural product in the area, England would certainly still push for the establishment of a colony. And if I were to take my best guess as to where, I would say that it would probably be established somewhere around North Carolina due to the distance from other colonies, agricultural viability, and the Spanish control there being practically non-existent. But though this colony may be profitable for England, they wouldn't see nearly the same level of dominance that they did in North America in our timeline. Instead, the colony ends up largely dominated by the French and the Spanish, who would control vast swaths of land, as well as Dutch merchants on the coast, who would likely develop their colonies into large urban centers, with England being relegated to only being a minor power on the continent. America would remain as a zone for conflict, though, as it's very likely that conflicts would erupt between, say, France and the Netherlands over territory in the Northeast, or between England and Spain over land in South Carolina. But without Britain controlling the entire East Coast, the French and Indian War never happens as France maintains their colonial empire, and Britain is never able to emerge as the dominant colonial superpower. Britain would still set up some colonies along the African and Indian coast, but without being nearly as powerful as in our timeline, they wouldn't be able to secure the vast amount of territory that they did, as they aren't able to conquer all of India, but are instead forced to compete with the French, Dutch, and Portuguese for trade. So, in the end, the British Empire, as we know it, never exists, and the colonial scene remains competitive for generations to come. So, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to stick around for more. And hey, you could also, maybe, subscribe or something. So, that's it for today's video. Well, till next time, see ya.